Hey guys, Jared with Trident Fly Fishing, and today we're going to be tying a fun fly. We're going to tie an intruder. Um, more of a style than a pattern, uh, but we're going to have some fun with this. We're going to go over some basics, and we're going to tie a very cool fly, in my opinion. Let's get started on it right now. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is get a thread base going. I'm going to use some black GSP uh, 100. Uh, this is a good thread for this fly because of the dubbing loops we're going to do. Um, so you'll notice here that I have a hook in the uh, vise. I'm going to cut this hook. Um, so I have a cheap salmon steelhead style hook here. Um, doesn't really matter. You can tie this on a shank. You can tie it on a hook and cut it like I'm going to do. You could probably tie it on a tube if you're set up for that. And basically however you want. So got that thread base now we're gonna put our wire in and I have Senyo's intruder wire and this is in the larger size which is gonna work well for this so I'm gonna take a measurement um, you could put your hook up here and figure out how much you need to be able to loop that through and then pass it through this loop you don't want it too big you don't want it too small so I got that measurement and I've already measured this wire so I'm going to get it on here, right there. But I, you really, really want to make sure that this is not twisted and that it is right on top of the hook shank. So I like to get a cute couple wraps and then pull tight so I can keep that right on top. And I felt it slip back a little bit. I think it's still going to be within our tolerances for how long we need that. A little longer than is perfect, but it's good enough. So we'll bring that thread back up. And the most important thing we're going to do here is we're going to pull these tag ends back and wrap over them. That way, this is never going to pull out. Let's get some tight wraps in there. Bring that back. Cover that up. Back up again. And the same thing. So I like to make sure that this part is tight so you don't get a bump. All right, cool. So we got that in there. One thing you'll notice, um, if you tie on a shank, you don't have to worry about this hook point. So that's an advantage there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a dubbing loop right at the back of my fly. I'm going to start my first bump that I'm going to use to prop some materials off of. So how we're going to create this dubbing loop is we're going to loop about four inches, maybe over, over, around. And I like to go around twice and then just pull. And that is good. We're just going to leave our thread out of the way. I'm going to hit this whole thing with some loon swax, dubbing wax. So the materials I put in here do not move. So you see, I just have this in my finger here. I'm just going to keep it open while I put the materials in. So the first material is some ice dove and chartreuse. Um, I like to break this up roughly in half. So I have some nice short uh, material here. You don't want it too, too long. And I'm just going to stick a chunk in there. The next material I have is some ice wing fiber. Um, again, I've broken this into chunks a little bit longer than our ice dove. But there's some longer stuff mixed in as well. And I'm going to get that in there and then we'll adjust. So this is my dubbing loop tool. You can use whatever you'd like. This little spinner from Dr. Slick is nice and compact and it works well for me. So I'm going to come in here and make sure these fibers are laying out at a 90 degree angle. Um, and we can adjust this again when we start to spin this up. And then I'm just going to compact it. So what you do is you hold your spinner, you pinch, and then you spin this thing up without releasing that pinch. And a good twist, and then you let go, and it spins right up. So we need a little bit more. I'm going to spin it again. And I know the spinner's off camera, but you get the idea. It's cool. I'm holding tight, keeping this in my fingers. Don't let go yet. And we're going to take 
a bodkin and just come straight down here. And this is our first pass. So we're going to do it nice and light and just pick out anything that's trapped. And you want to be able to see the thread through. So I did lose some ice stub. I can feel it. That's okay. And you can hear it pulling and popping. So once you stop hearing that, and once this is pretty well picked out, I like to come in here with a piece of Velcro. So again, I have a tool from Dr. Slick with some Velcro on one end. So we're just gonna come in here and lightly pick this out. And that looks pretty good to me. So what I'm gonna do is lift this up and then I'm gonna kind of relax a little bit and you'll see once it stops twisting, I'm gonna be able to come in here and fold these materials back. Um, you may need to use a little bit of water or saliva here to fold these back and get a nice control. And then we're just gonna start wrapping. So to kind of keep everything compact, making sure that it is going backward. That ice stub there I've kind of wrapped over itself a few times and then this ice wing fiber is going to go a little bit in front. It doesn't look good now but in two seconds we'll fix it. So we'll tie that off and then come in here get rid of the rest of that. All right, so make a securing wrap. Just make sure that's completely tied down. Come back in with my bodkin. And let's see what we got. So we'll pick out some of this loose stuff, anything that's too long. And there's a little bit of a science to this. We're just going to leave that. Looks pretty good to me right now. So the next thing we're going to tie in is a soft flowing material. In this case, I have some Arctic Fox and it's in Kingfisher Blue. So I've grabbed a chunk here and just trying to measure and see, you know, how much I can kind of sparsely put 360 around this hook. And I want to make a measurement. So when I do tie this in, it just goes past this uh, chartreuse dubbing here. So what I'm going to do is pick out some of the under fur here, um, the fuzzy stuff that we just don't need that's going to add some bulk. So all I'm doing is just grabbing it by the tips and pulling out anything in here that I don't want. So we have our measurement. What I'm going to do is take this, switch hands so it's now reverse. We're going to tie this in reverse, which is going to give us a good profile. It's going to allow this Arctic Fox to kick back over our dubbing bump. So this material doesn't like to spin too well on the hook. So you kind of got to work it. I'm going to throw two loose wraps. And then I'm going to do a combination of thread tension or lack of, and then work it around with my fingers may not have enough but we'll see this is almost like if you've ever done this with bucktail it's very similar but this material doesn't like to see we'll get a gap it doesn't like to go around as well let's check this just trying to see what my material distribution looks like i don't want too much on the bottom i don't want too much on this top and I don't want any gaps. So I think I did a good job there. It looks pretty good. So we'll take some tight turns in here, and then we're gonna pull all of this back. I think I have a little bit of a gap that I'm not too happy with, but we'll make it work. So pull through, and then some wraps back. You know, that worked out fine. And that looks like a nice little veil that we got going on. This thread is slippery and you can see it slip off that bump. So be careful with GSP. 
All right, I'm gonna add a little more flash into this fly. Uh, this is preferential for sure. Um, I just have some crystal flash and I'm just gonna put two strands on each side. So we got that there and then we'll just pull this over. And that's good to me. And we can trim this out now or we can do it later. I want this a little bit longer than these tips here. So we've kind of got a little bit of a lateral line thing going on. Another little bit of fish attracting magic. So to cover up this bump, this tying bump, and kind of make this rear station cohesive, I'm going to grab a single feather, a schloppen feather, and I'm going to use the same color as my Arctic Fox, which is Kingfisher Blue. So I've taken my feather and I've prepared it by pulling the fibers back, getting rid of the junk at the bottom of the f a feather that I don't need and creating a little delta, a little triangle that I can tie in with. So what I'm gonna do is just tie that in. So I'd like to get a figure eight wrap in there. And make sure that it will wrap the way we want it to. Cool, so that's in there. So again, sweep these fibers back. Make sure your first wrap is where you need it. Ooh, looks like we got some junk in there. Well, some broken tips, but we'll get rid of that and it'll be fine. And this is caught up. Keeping this tighter. There we go, that's a little better. Let's get this back. Not doing too well with economy of thread wraps. Um, and you can see I'm making a lot of wraps and it can create problems down the road that makes it hard to cover up. Let's just bring this up here just to kind of mitigate some of this, uh, some of these bumps I've created. Let's get rid of this. And then we're gonna tie in a body material I'm just gonna use some crystal flash. Um, you can really use whatever you'd like here. Uh, diamond braid is a good choice. I'm gonna grab, uh, what is this? Three strands of crystal flash. Tie this in. Bring it back and then, oop, I don't like that wrap. And then we'll leave this right off, right at our tie off point all the way up, create a body. Yep. So you will lose, like I am right there, some fibers sometimes. So let's be careful there. Get rid of that short one. And you'll see because I've tied all these materials in, I got a little bit of a bump, which you want to avoid, but is almost inev inevitable here. So what I'm gonna do is reinforce this body with a little bit of bone dry, solarized, solarized bone dry. And you see too, once I've gotten that soaked, it becomes a little more transparent. So if you don't want that look, um, Tie with a different color thread. Don't use black. But for me, this doesn't matter. Cool. Vice is a little wobbly. All right, so let's bring our thread back a little bit. I don't want to crowd anything. It looks like we have a lot of room, but we're gonna throw another dubbing loop and they can take up 
a good amount of space here. We just really don't want to crowd our eye. So again, about the same length for this dubbing loop. And let's just get our thread out of the way. So we're going to do a similar thing to the back. We're going to create another station. So some dubbing wax. We're going to use similar materials. So I have some ice dub in purple. UV purple here, and I'm going to break that up again, and I want short fibers. I don't want to use the full length, about half the length, and keep this nice and compact. So we'll stick that in there, get it right up in there. And then I've got some ice wing fiber again, and this is in purple. And we're going to break this up, and you may have to cut it. This stuff can be hard to break sometimes. And we're going to again look for fibers that are a little bit longer than our ice dub, but not too long. And typically when I make these, I create these dubbing loops on, on my tying desk, but you can definitely do it the way I'm doing it here. It's with too much material. And I like to run this through my fingers. and pull it apart so all these fibers align. And then when I put it in the loop, I don't have to pick it out as much. So I'm gonna add another material in. Uh, this is gonna be my shoulder. And I have some SF blend. And it's mixed with a little bit of flash. So this material is gonna be longer. And what I mean by shoulder, it's what's gonna prop up our soft marabou that we're gonna stick in the front. It's going to give this fly some body, like a shoulder on a bait fish. So just stick that in there. And then I'm going to close my loop, again using my Dr. Slick tool. And just so you can see the whole loop, what I have. And you can see that nice delta shape, you know, going from skinny, medium to long, or short, medium, long. And it's just going to help us build a profile. So again, I'm going to spin this up. Twist, 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 and then pull down. And I can put a little bit more in there. All right, so that twisted up pretty well. So I'm going to come in again, being careful not to pull too much stuff out, but just release kind of these trap fibers. And I always find it's the ice stub that comes out a little bit more than some of these longer fibers. All right. So we've got that. It looks pretty good. And I don't think I need to hit this with a brush. So I'm going to pull this up again so you can see it. And then I'm going to pull all these fibers and look kind of for a resting point. Um, so you don't want this twisting on you when you're doing this. So start by folding this back. Being careful to kind of divide this down the middle. Okay, and again, you can use some water here to help fold these back. And then I'm gonna make a wrap. Keeping this ice dub compact, wrapping over itself. And then I'm going to come forward a little bit with that ice wing fiber. And then we're going to keep going forward with this SF blend. And this SF blend is stiff, so we want to make sure that it does go back. We lost a little material, but that's okay. Okay, and now we're going to come in here, tie this off, and we'll get rid of this because we don't need it. So again, I'm going to come in with a bodkin, and I'm going to be relatively gentle. Uh, this stuff is tied in pretty well, but we don't want to rip anything unnecessarily. But you will lose fibers. And just pick it out. 
maybe pull out anything that's a little errant. And I'm going to come back. This last wrap that I made didn't lay back. Uh, actually, it looks fine. But I'm going to come back and kind of butt some wraps. Make a cone in front of it. Make sure it is where I need it. Okay. Perfect. So at this point, I'm going to put some eyes on this. Uh, you could have put eyes on at the beginning. But I like to kind of put my eyes on now so that I can do a little bit of spacing and make sure that everything is going to fit. Let's put these eyes right there. Okay, and this is GSP, so this stuff holds really well, so you don't have to put a ton of wraps. Okay, so let's put some more flash in here. Again, I'm just going to use Crystal Flash. The reason I like Crystal Flash is it tends to pick up kind of the other colors that are in your fly. So let's just do this again. Let's put two, and we'll have them end right there. And then I'll fold that back again. I'm just gonna rotate, make sure it's where I want it. It is. And then we'll come in with our scissors and trim that where we want it. That's a little cool. All right, the last material I'm gonna tie in is some marabou. And this is a nice soft material. It's gonna breathe well. It's not going to collapse because we've created this shoulder for it to push against. So it's going to give us movement and body. All right, let's get our marabou in here. Let's see if we can get a nice clean tie end point. This GSP is slippery, so your materials can pull out. Be aware of that. Okay, so that should be good to go. Let's get this wrapping. So we're gonna fold this back. That's the name of the game here, is fold everything back. And let's make sure it doesn't twist on us when we're wrapping. Fold it back, wrap it forward. Try not to trap. And these things always wanna twist on you. No matter what you do, that's okay. Okay. It's easier once you get down to the thicker part of the stem. Sometimes. I don't like that short one. Pull it out. Okay. Come in here. Grab that. You want to stop wrapping when you get to that transition from thick, thin stem to thick stem. You don't need that in there. All right. I'm going to kind of come through my eyes again just to doubly make sure they are on there. Okay. Let's come in here with a bodkin. See what we did. See what we think here. We got some flash. We got some marabou. We got good body. We got good support with our shoulders. We got a nice profile. It's going to flow well. At this point, if you want to add an accent material, uh, you can do that. I'm very happy with how this fly looks. I'm going to leave it where it is. Whip finish and finish off the head with some UV. So a couple options here. Sometimes I like to use uh, a black UV. I'm just going to use some Loon Thin. And then get it in here, support my eyes. Make sure my materials are getting, or the wraps that are tying my materials in are getting covered as well. And then we'll just 
and finish it off. All right, so at this point, really the only thing we need to do to finish this fly is to cut off the hook um, and then put a hook into our loop here in the back. So we'll just find a good point where we can get in on this and cut that off. And close your eyes. Oh, good. Yuki doke. And you'll see we have this loop. So what we got to do is just get in here. And I'm going to use these pliers kind of close this loop up a little bit. Which is incredibly difficult to do. There we go. So I have just made that easier to go through my eye. All right, guys, so what we're gonna do is just stick this loop through the eye of our hook, which you need to kind of pinch. And then we're just gonna stick our hook through this loop. And it sucks because there's a lot of material back here. So you may want to actually do this before you start tying. Um, I always do it after, you know, sometimes I don't even have hooks on the flies that I'm fishing with until I get on the water and put a hook in there. So we've got this in there. What we want to do is just pull tight, snug that up. And you may need to kind of oop, not hook yourself. It's in there. It's really in there. I think I'm bleeding. You may need to coerce this hook a little bit and make sure your wire it's going to have that hook nice and flat. So I'm sure this is all out of focus, but I hope you guys get the general idea. Super simple. Change up your hooks, change up your hook color, change up the hook size, uh, change your hook when it's dull. If you break a hook, you can change the hook. It's really one of the major advantages to this pattern. Thanks for watching guys. And we'll see you next time.